Hey everybody, it's Cornloo here. I don't know, that wasn't even good Cornloo. <laughs> anyway, welcome everybody to another campaign. This time we'll be going to the Rajas campaigns, the Two Sword Difficulty Surya Varman Khmer campaign. And first up will be the Usurpation. Forward march! We do not stop! Until the sun falls beneath the tree line. I am Sangrama, honored general of the Khmer Empire, tasked with quelling a rebellion. Just a year after the passing of the revered Suryavarman, his successor faces staunch opposition. This chaos threatens to dismantle the empire that took nearly five decades to build. Inspiring an army of largely levy soldiery is difficult. Most are simple farmers and craftsmen, strangers to the ways of war and the grim chaos of battle. They should understand the cause for which they fight. As we trudged through the mud, I summoned the captains to the front of the line. I told them of the events that occurred before many of them were born. They would use this knowledge to inspire their men to fight. Surya Varman was once little more than a magnet with a minor claim to the throne held by another. Udiaditya Varman I had established his seat in Angkor, claiming the entire empire as his dominion. Gathering his army, Surya Varman marched on Angkor from the west, establishing a camp not far from the city. And that's where we come in. Storm the city of Angkor and kill Udyatityarvarman the first. Oh boy. Surya Varman's uh, army is restricted to the castle age and Poplin is 100. Surya Varman is a powerful warrior who leads from the front lines. If his elephant is slain beneath him, he'll return to the camp. Uh, destroying Udyatar... Udayatityar Varman's uh, field camps will deprive him of, of offensive potential, but we'll still have to take the fight to Angkor. Angkor is well fortified. Khmer elephants are mobile, hardy, and quite effective. Surya Varman has established a camp to the west of the map. Uh, no, that's us. Uh, Udyatit Yarvarman is concentrated with his forward armies in three military camps. And one is like here, one's like here, and one's like here. Angkor is like here. And uh, there's a village to the south. Udyatit Yarvarman. That's a hard one for a native English speaker to pronounce. Surya Varman is not that bad. Anyway, welcome to Asia and the Khmer Empire. This is going to be like some 50 years after the end of Yodit. And this is our first Asian and Rajas campaign. Uh, this one, I think, was designed by the uh, same person who did Tariq bin Ziyad, but this one definitely feels much easier. Maybe it's because you can get Khmer elephants, but you'll notice a lot of the same tropes, like starting with large camps with like a huge variety of units just kind of scattered everywhere, enemies that have infinite resources. Um, you start in the castle age fairly quickly, like it's not like Yodit where like you're starting in feudal age all the way up into like the third one and then castle age in the fourth like you're you're starting in uh castle age pretty quickly getting a huge pop limit all that stuff anyway uh sodia vaman is a pretty great hero um unlike a lot of our other heroes where it's been kind of like well if they die they die i'd like to keep sodia vaman alive because you can see he's got pretty sick stats as a battle elephant. Anyway, we actually have a pretty sizable starting bit of income. We should wall off. 
Ê, xù xù đây Nhẹ sang xong Nhẹ sang xong Nhẹ sang xong I kind of want to get just a few more villagers before we click up. Just so we're not like getting to the castle age and then having nothing. Controversial thought. Anyway, uh, Udyatit Tiarvarman is just. Like, his army is in these, you know, little camps and stuff. So it's our task. First, before we take the fight to Angkor, to go for these camps. If you guys are regular follow followers of my stream, you would know that uh, I am not a big fan of Khmer <laughs> in multiplayer. I think they're really, really underwhelming. I think they're too one-dimensional. Their their best units are elephants and scorpions, two units that are situational in their use. And it's like everything that they do that is not specifically elephants and scorpions is really underwhelming. But for campaigns, come are just fine because, you know, you have space to boom. Anyway, you can see that our camp is not too hard to wall off. Here's where we can trade if we really want. Also, like, I feel like this campaign designer always has, like, a gray player called Local Inhabitants. Like, in every single scenario, it seems. Not every single one, but in a lot of them. But... Like, thinking back to Tariq, because the enemies have infinite resources, they don't have economies or anything like that. Like, if you remember Yodi 3, where it, was, it behooved us to strike... What the hell? Uh, the Begemder Kingdom, like, as quick as possible? Like, to, you know, prevent them from building up? This is like the opposite with this. It's like, there, there's no point to attacking it early, because they're... What the hell is this? Let's try this again. Okay, that was weird. Five. They look. To the castle age. Uh, unfortunately, we won't really be able to make good use out of a lot of the Khmer bonuses here, like not needing buildings to click up. Um, or the garrison and houses thing. Like, I just can't really see those being especially useful throughout the campaign. But battle elephants... Being faster, definitely gonna be quite nice. Definitely, uh, make some scorpions at some point as well, most likely. But by and large, this should be a uh, Battle Elephant Simulator 2019. Or 2020, by the time you guys see this. I'm recording this on December 30th, 2019. Because I'm going to be in Germany for NAC3 by the time that you guys are seeing this video. So I'm just recording a bunch, in the a bunch ahead so we can keep the, the train rolling. Actually, let's get a mining camp up here. No, 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 no. Oh, God. Oh, what? Dumb. Okie dokie. Let's get a stable, get some battle elephants out, just clean up these random annoying units. 
But you'll just see both of these guys' scores steadily increase over time, just as they get tributed resources from the empty void. Also, conveniently for us, uh, Uncore doesn't really attack us until we attack them. Like, they're very defensive. So really, we just need to worry about the army. And then Udiatietjarvarman is just like, it's a dummy AI. It's just him and his, like, royal guard or whatever. Ballista Elephants, Khmer unique unit. Probably won't be making many of them, because they're like the worst unique unit in the game, in my opinion. <laughs> like, they just have so few situations in which they're good. Blacksmith, yes, it is. Let's get another elephant just to kill these things. These little flies. Uh, our pop thumb's 100, right? Yeah. Uh, so what am I going to be doing for village account? Probably like 50s, like mid-50s. Oh, I an empty farm. Uh, the army uh, doesn't really have... Like, their defenses aren't very good. They just have some towers. So we're just going to use Battle Elephant Power to take them down. Um, thank you. Yeah, that should be good. Come on, splash damage! Well, so much for keeping Studio of Armon alive. Well, actually, that splash damage is pretty sick. Bye. But in this campaign, we are going to be needing lots and lots and lots of food. Because elephants cost a lot of that. Because they're hungry and they need to, need to have their, their food. They're growing elephants. Unfortunately, Khmer got kind of indirectly nerfed with DE, where Battle Elephants, or rather, Elite Battle Elephants, no longer have uh, 16 a base attack. They only have a base attack of 14, same as a Paladin. So Khmer, who are already a weak civilization and the most elephant-reliant civilization, like, were even more nerfed. Like, now they have Faith and Hussar, but... Yeah. Get that guy. Damn it. <laughs> oh, well, rip Sturdy of Armon. Take him back to the camp and see that he recovers. That's fine. Just have to, uh, you know. Oh, wait a minute. 
I just realized Sergio Varman didn't benefit from the Khmer speed bonus for elephants. It seems like a lot slower. That's annoying. I mean, I'd still rather have him alive than not alive, but. Yeah. Not the end of the world. Anywho, take down the fortress up here. Then we'll take the fortress over here. Then we'll build like a forward castle, get some forward stables, siege workshops, that sort of idea, and then make our way to Encore. I actually need more gold miners. That also might help. Masonry! And yeah, elephants are good. I think they have plus 7 bonus damage versus buildings. So you can use them as, uh, you know, pseudo-siege units. Like what, they, these guys are have a base attack of 16. It would be plus 7 versus buildings, would make 23. And then minus two building armor, or melee armor from buildings would make it 21. Yeah, that's pretty sick still. Like, yeah, they have a few pikemen here, but I'm not too worried. I guess you could focus the houses if you're really concerned about their population getting out of hand, but I'm not. So we're just going to snipe the military buildings. Oops. Stone, please. All right. Light Cav, that was not the smartest idea you've ever had. Now, Encore is not going to be as much of a pushover as the army is, because they make lots of monks, and pikemen, and stuff generally much more annoying. But like, why would you really need a market on this scenario? Like, are these local inhabitants really necessary? Like, you have plenty of gold mines. Not like it's the, the world's longest scenario. Oh yeah, they have like two random war galleys for some reason. Don't really know why. They don't have a dock or anything, just the two war galleys. Making it the most mildly of annoying. But yeah, I mean, they, they don't make elephants, so you don't really have to worry about too much. Just the pikemen. That's me being an elephant. Get him! Get him while they're focusing other things! Get sunk. Part 2. I 
Actually, let's be smart. Let's take down the barracks first. Because pikemen get around 20 bajillion bonus damage versus elephants, you know, give or take. Which is why they're so hard to make use in 1v1s. Like, in team games, they're amazing. Uh, like, Khmer are, are a really good pocket sieve. But it's just, like... In a 1v1, like, elephants are just take so long to get up and running. And then even when you do, by the time you get up to elephants, like, you know your opponent's gonna have time to get up to halberdiers. You know, assuming that the enemy sieve has halberdiers, which is most good sieves. I wonder what the single most determinative, like, upgrade is when we consider, like, is a sieve a good sieve or not? Like, you know, among technologies that are limited. It's not like, loom! No. Sure, man. Maybe bloodlines? I don't know. Okie dokie, so we're gonna establish a forward camp. You know, somewhere around here. Yeah, let's grab a monastery too, why not? Heal up our elephants, maybe convert some uh, elephants that they converted. Oh, these guys do make elephants, I forgot. They definitely make monks. That's that's the thing I remember the most about these guys is they make monks. Oh, yeah, actually, these guys make make lots of battle elephants. Whoops. another one in a second when we have an army. <laughs> Looks like we could use a few more Loomberjacks. Could make some scorpions. Or not, because I have no wood. Oh, they don't have tusk swords. That's nice for us. Oh yeah, random Khmer idea. I think tusk swords should give another plus two attack to bring their elite battle elephants up to where they were pre-DE nerf. Just because Khmer are so elephant reliant that their elephants deserve to be super good. Like, if anyone's elephants deserve to be super good, it's Khmer. Like, I know Burmese are also like an elephant sieve, like, with a very heavy elephant focus, but Burmese have a ton of non-elephant based options. They have Rambai, they have super strong infantry. Uh, they have super good monks. Whereas, like, Khmer, 
yeah, they have hand cannon ears, which is which is definitely nice, but still not quite as good as all those other things, in my opinion. Really need some gold income. Oh, the Ballista Elephant. So the reason that I would say that the Ballista Elephant is the single worst unique unit in the game is... Like, when do you want it? They're not good in low numbers. Because of the, you know, they're super expensive. Like, you're only getting 8 attack and 5 range for something that's, you know, a pretty hefty price tag. And it's like, okay, so they're really good in mass, but, like, that's, like, most units. <laughs> like, I know, yes, they are, pop they are very tanky and population efficient in mass, but... Like, why not just have actual heavy scorpions? Because Khmer heavy scorpions are super good. They do way more damage and have longer range, and if you have the elephants to tank in front... And you're all good. I mean, this is just kind of a slow grind to victory. Oh, whoops. Meant to convert both elephants. Scorpions aren't really that useful when the armies are all spread out like that. Like, I don't know, like, this just doesn't feel super engaging to me. It's just like, yep. We're just going to slowly grind them down until we snipe their production buildings. are getting rather unfortunately low. Maybe I just need to mass them up a little bit. Come back to the light, Mr. Elephant. I know it's one of mine because it has tusk swords. Oh, it would also be really nice if my uh, castle wasn't attacking a university. That would probably help a lot. Yeah, 
ีมาพุทธเียบเบลุโบงรันยัดNow things are looking good. Population s t i l l like starting to climb. Yeah, now we broke them. We don't have to actually defeat Encore. We just need to. Uh, Kill Udiati t e g a r v a r m a n the name that I will never pronounce correctly. Really? These guys have Teuton allies. So yeah, like these guys are the royal guard, quote unquote, of u d i a t a r Yavarman. I think I actually got it that time. Um, so they don't, they don't like uh, make more troops or anything. Going that way. That makes little to no sense. Oh, they have another monastery over here. Rip. Oh yeah. Also, design feature of all of these campaigns, like the the Tariq campaign and this campaign and the Tamerlane campaign. All of the enemy buildings are on tiny hills, just to make your life that much better. Honestly, I should make like some scouts or something, because u d i a t a r y a v a r m a n is uh, a king, so probably can outrun all my elephants. And you can't convert kings. Get him! Get him! Or he could just stop running, and that that works too. Victory screech! <laughs> so yeah, really straightforward scenario number one: introduction to Kamur and the Sword of Armon campaign. Nothing too fancy, but that is okay, especially for scenario number one. Here's Angkor. Hey, where is their other monastery? I thought I saw some monks coming from over there. I don't know. Oh yeah, I'm not sure what this is for. I guess it's just for like trading or whatever. The captains listened eagerly as I gave my account of the usurpation. Despite a numerical disadvantage, Suya Varma's tactical acumen proved critical to the success of such a risky offensive. Droves of Uriya t i t i a Varma's troops fell to Suya Varma's disciplined infantry and elephants. Well, not too many infantry, but lots of elephants. Angkor, Suya Varman gave the order to his disciplined army that the city was to be left intact, the civilians unharmed. 
He would not begin his rule by committing acts of savage tyranny upon his own people. Oh, but savage acts of tyranny are so fun! But yep, that was Uri of Arman 1. We're always going to have some pretty sick KDs in this campaign since we're going to be going for mostly elephants. Yeah, you can see we're kind of at a stalemate for a little while, but uh, we got her done at the end. Anyway, that was the usurpation, and uh, next time we'll be quelling the rebellion. Hope to see you guys then.